All right, hello everyone. This is Kuroda coming at you. Today is, well, Happy New Year to everyone around the world. Today is the second. Um, took a little bit of a day off yesterday as we are going into what I believe to be an undead versus orc matchup. And as always, I will be going under the, um, well, going under the vision of the orc player. First of all, I apologize. I know that you guys hear the the rally point of that flag moving all over the place there were no observers in this game as you guys could tell from the loading screen and because of that i um, i need to turn off fog of war which does make things a little bit more difficult for me the replay system in warcraft 3 not nearly as polished as it is in starcraft 2. now this is an undead versus orc matchup we see fly spawning as the purple orc in the top left hand side of the map he is white on the minimap because, well, this is his vision. Meanwhile, it is also the yellow undead player here on C, I believe, A and X I spawning as the yellow undead on the bottom right. This is game one in a three game set. I don't know if it's a best of three or a best of five, but we'll hopefully enjoy this series nonetheless as we are um, looking at one of the better orc players in the world. Fly has been continually up there for quite some time. Um, no, no doubt about it. We'll see how he does against this rather unknown for me, this Ansi player who um, I don't really know too much about. Now, a lot of players have been asking me, why don't I give more information on the tournaments? Why don't I give more information, just more details? Well, the most up-to-date websites out there are actually in Chinese, and my Chinese, I cannot read it at all. So unfortunately, it's a little bit more difficult for me to figure out where these tournaments, where these games, these replays are coming from. All right, you can see that the Orc Peon has come up over here. Just making a quick sight check, making sure that there is no blight. And by making sure that there is no blight, he knows that his opponent is at least on a different part of the map. So what is going to be happening? We are going to be going into a Farseer, not the typical hero that I was expecting. I was expecting a Blade Master, hence the reason why I had actually gone for the Orc's Vision, just because that Blade Master is impossible to spot if I was under the Undead Vision. Anyways, that Farseer is making a quick run and a quick round. He is trying to try and do some harassment, but unfortunately for him, he's going to head up this ramp and realize that this is full cross spawns. And at full cross spawns, this is not good for him at all. He wants to try to get some sort of acolyte kills going into play. He can see that his opponent is on the very, very far side of the map. There is one wolf over here that was doing a little bit of harassment, but not going to be able to do very much either. As we can see that there is already a death knight on the field coming in here. Now, this Farseer versus Undead matchup, this is not something that you typically um, see very often. You can see that there are ghouls off over here. There's a death coil being used onto a spirit wolf, and I'm not really sure what to expect of this also the wolves are now attacking this poor ghoul and this ghoul has taken a fair bit of damage i'm expecting a death coil to be coming in anytime soon now there's the death coil at the last possible moment very nice and well, nicely done and well played there as the farseer has taken a fair amount of damage as well i cannot believe that this that fly is just allowing himself to suffer so much damage at the hand of the undead now this farseer is going to be forced to retreat a bit the death knight does not have unholy aura is that pig going to get in the way no it is not there's that healing salve now making its way off to the north as that farseer is just going to slowly regenerate the necessary hit points before trying to continue that sort of play all right back over here we can see that there are ghouls over here as well and i'm really curious as to what exactly the undead is is expecting he doesn't quite know what his opponent is doing you can see that the farseer is here coming in with a bit of harassment and this is rather unusual for an intelligence hero to try and just harass a strength or an agility hero this is not your typical typical play style normally the farseer wants to get higher up in level get a little bit more durability and so far i'm trying to just run through predictions and scenarios in my head and i don't know what the follow-up play is gonna be from this orc we can see that he is taking the tier two he could try to pick up a torrent chieftain and go for a chain wave strategy but against an undead player that is severely ill-advised because of um, destroyers statues are very very strong against that particular strategy now coming back around you can see that the undead is pretty much playing a very solid game 
inside his base. He should start to be training up Crypt Fiends. There we go. A eventual transition into Crypt Fiends as we're just looking at a little bit of this engagement harassment going back and forth. This one ghoul actually may get taken down. There it goes. Finally getting some experience on the board, but the Death Knight is extremely, extremely close now to level 2 and should get to level 2 very easily once this Null Overseer is taken out. But the Farseer is once again coming back for a bit more harassment and that low hit point spirit wolf will be forced to back off this death knight taking a bit of damage as well as you can see that the no warden is here both sides just coming in for that damage and the farseer finally gets another skeletal minion but that is not really anything to to be that impressed or happy about he is now only sitting at 52 experience his opponent already sitting at level two with that unholy aura now and we'll be able to move around very quickly. We can see the Shadow Hunter has been picked up as well. So the Shadow Hunter, the second hero, and the backup hero, and we may see some sort of serpent ward harassment, or we, we're going into a bestiary. Only one bestiary right now. Um, no, du double bestiary. So it is going to be dual wind riders. And the question is whether or not the Crypt Fiends are going to get web in time. All right. So wind riders not too out of the ordinary. You're going to see, um, you're going to see what the Shadow Hunter and the Farseer trying to put a bit of pressure with the units that he has. There's a quick hex onto a Crypt Fiend. That Crypt Fiend has taken a bit of damage. Meanwhile, a Beastmaster coming out from the Undead player. And this is not your typical dual hero combinations at all. I was totally expecting either a Naga Sea Witch or um, a Lich at the very least. And no, it is going to be a Beastmaster instead. And this Beastmaster is perhaps expecting the Undead um, or, or expecting those Wind Riders. And then by getting Quill Beast will be very, very much um, just better defended against any sort of air harassment. All right, let's take a look at this. Uh, oh, Speed Scroll. Oh, this one, the Shadow Hunter is going to get the kill there. Meanwhile, the Farseer down to eight hit points was able to escape and meanwhile, the Shadow Hunter is now trying to get away as well. Does have that speed scroll, but is it going to really work? The Farseer is coming around the far side here, and it looks as though the Death Knight is just going to try and engage. All right, dual Wind Riders are already up in the air. Triple Wind Riders. Meanwhile, dual Wind Rider production. You can see the amount of gold here. And this is just looking oh so interesting here as we now see the peons are starting to engage back. All right, Wind Riders are focusing down those uh, poor ghouls here. And this is not a very safe engagement for any of these units. If the, if the Crypt Fiends do not have a web, then this is not a good fight for him to be in as the Wind Riders are just going to be dealing so much damage. We can see that web is not being researched or is, is already done here. And now the Bestiary now trying to grab a Kodo which will give a little bit of bonus damage as well. So far, you can see that the units are now fighting back over here. It looks like those the Quill Beast will fall pretty much without a problem. Healing Salve perhaps onto the Farseer. No, it looks like the Kodo Beasts are here now ready to go. And this is looking extremely good for Fly. As Fly could easily, easily level up to level 2 on both of these heroes. That's, I believe, what he's going to be doing here. And then perhaps um, he should be clearing out a creep camp. Not quite sure what he's doing. Reinforced defenses uh, means that all of these orc burrows now have fortified armor. As we're looking to move over to the top right, perhaps take down this ogre warrior creep camp. We should be seeing perhaps a couple of, of spirit wolves. The spirit wolves are a little bit late there. And thereby not absorbing the necessary damage. We are going to see the Farseer pick up that Tome of Intelligence. But I'm really curious as to whether or not this is going to give level 2. Coming back around, the Death Knight has wandered here. Wants to know where his opponent is. Doesn't see his opponent creeping out the Goblin Observatory. The F Farseer is sitting at level um, 2 now. So is the Shadow Hunter. As we're looking at the Beastmaster sitting at level 2. Perhaps getting um, a Hawk as well to be able to keep track of the air. Crypt Fiends most likely have web by now. I would be surprised if they didn't. No easy way to check. As the Farseer and the Spirit Wolves are going to do a bit of an engagement here. Here you go. Four Wind Riders. One Kodo Beast. A whole bunch of forest um, or a whole bunch of spirit wolves absorbing a bit of damage and now we see even true shot aura that is going to be some extra heavy firepower on those wind riders plus eight damage between the kodos uh, the kodos war song battle drums or the war uh, the war drums and that true shot aura giving plus eight damage that is going to be huge um, almost, yeah, a full 20 percent bonus damage as we're looking now at the voodoo lounge getting reinforced 
because of that com uh, reinforced defenses, those Orc Burrows are a, a bit better at absorbing those Crypt Fiend damage. And now we see uh, Orc Tri Hero. Okay, Orc Tri Hero now coming in. Perhaps we'll see Endurance Aura. We could see Shock um, Shockwave as well. This is rather un um, out of the ordinary still as the Torrent Chieftain is rather low on hit points already. Going to get surrounded here. Is he going to get stomp? He uses the Speed Scroll just a bit too late. There is the stomp now as we can see that the Torrent Chieftain is just going to get taken out very, very easily down to dead now as the units are now trying to reinforce and back up again. All right, you can see more Skeletal Minions coming in. Meanwhile, Fly is just taking this time to clear out um, more and more creep camps. Wants to get to level 3. Gets to level 3 on one. Gets to level 3 on the other. Squirrel Town Portal should be used any moment now. And um, as all the units do need to head back home. What is going on? Why aren't they going back home? As we can see that the Torrin Chieftain is also making its way in. Alright, there is the Squirrel Town Portal. Um, indicating that everyone should get the heck out of this fight. There you go. There's the engagement. And now there is one bear out of position here. All right, we could see a bit of an engagement. Oh, there's the webs now coming down. That one poor wind rider just out of position there. We can see healing wave should be coming in. Multiple webs coming in as well as the wind riders are going to get focused down rather quickly. The Torrent Chieftain is back out. The Farseer is still in play here. And are we going to see the, an, enough damage? All the wind riders have pretty much been focused down already. There goes a couple of bears, but that is not still enough. Fly is still looking like he's having a bit of a problem. There is a good stomp hitting some of those piercing air damage units as we now see another Wind Rider coming back into play. The Tri Hero trying very hard to just fight back this army, but there is just too many units in this fight, and I believe that is going to be it now. Now that um, the Crypt Fiends also have Burrow, they are going to be able to Burrow if they are low on hit points, and there is the GG. Fly losing game one to Ansi here on Twisted Meadows. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Please stay tuned for game two.